Hello. Whip. Can you see Hello. us? Hello. <laughs> there you guys are. It's me, Zach. Dustin, if either he's this way or this way or this way. Dustin's down. I'm down. <laughs> yeah. I fought my way to the top for so long. I worked so hard. I know. And here <laughs> you are. Care. I can shift you around probably. <laughs> I don't care. know how to do that. Hey, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Very nice to meet you guys. Thanks for taking the time and carving out a little bit of, bit of room for us. Well, that's good. I uh, just um, got back from work you know i'm living up in uh, portland maine now and uh, i work for a company uh for the last six years that does construction but i am kind of like managing stuff so oh gotcha i got okay. a pretty full schedule um but there's nothing better than bowing out early bowing out early to talk about you the nostalgia <laughs> talk about me nostalgize with us uh yeah. do you do you enjoy the the management oh well you know it's one of those damn things that you got to do in life and um you know when i first came here my wife and i drove east in 2015 after you know something like 30 years out in california wow. and the kids had all grown up and everything and and i figured i was um finished with it to a certain degree i mean i think that was my frame of mind at that point um, kind of ready to move on to a different chapter, entering a new phase of life and all that. And then, uh, you know, and then one thing has come up after another, uh, here after about three years, people started reaching out and sending me scripts for plays that they were doing. Okay. And I started to get to know the theater, uh, scene here, which is pretty, um, vital scene, you know? Um, there's some roots, interesting right? stuff going on here. Oh. And, uh, and then, you know, one thing led to another and I just, you know, I've clocked about six plays now. Oh, cool. And, um, and then, you know, of course this Top Gun thing came out last year or so, or actually, you know, that had kind of come up before because, right. yeah. uh, you know, when they got wind of the fact that I had been in Top Gun then you know the theater that i was doing here all of a sudden started exploiting that oh that's <laughs> right. and then it became sort of like the you know the the it's the portland press herald it's the local paper oh that's fun and, you know i walked into my coffee shop one morning and there was like on the front page you know and uh oh no <laughs> it's it's weird it it is it's weird um well, listen, I don't want to, you know, I don't know if you're not starting. Is This is not a live thing, right? No, we're, we're going to drop this uh, in a couple months. We always yeah. kind of backload episodes. And so this will drop around August, I think, um, to coincide with uh, Ruskies. We're going to be talking about Ruskies on our show. So. Do, is it pronounced Ruskies or Ruskies? When you, when well, you, I always called it Ruskies, but a lot of people say Ruskies. But, sorry. you know. And then my last name is Hubley, even though everybody calls me Hubley because that's the way it's spelled. And my name, it's, my name's it's, Schaefer, but people call me Schaffer all the time. So yeah, I guess yours looks like it because it's got two Fs. Yeah. Yeah, but but then people are like, "You spelled it wrong," and I go, "Well, yeah, your, your face is wrong." So right, your face <laughs> is wrong. I feel like uh, right from the Russian perspective, it's got to be Ruski. Ruski, yeah, right, Ruski. Ruski. Yeah, they would say Paruski, you know, so Ruskies. Yeah, I mean, I always called it a Ruskies, but I'm not surprised to hear. Well, uh, right, Ruski seems Ruskies. like the Americanized version. Well, you know, the problem is Zach's got two Fs in his name, so everything's upside down for him. It is. Uh, I'm a little, uh, you know, right. I have a chip on my shoulder. So Right. <laughs> but Schaffer, yeah, I, I, I would never intuitively call you Schaffer. No. Well, I grew up <laughs> drinking Schaefer beer, so there you, you know, go. Different spelling. Right. Right? Yeah. I think different. it's one F and an A E in there too. So different spelling. Yeah. Right. Did you um did you grow up in Montclair, New Jersey? No, I grew up in New York City. And then my my we, you know, the family split up and uh I moved with my mother out to Montclair, New Jersey, where I went to high school. Okay. So it was high school. High yeah. school only. Got it. Got it. I'm originally from New Jersey and my sister, brother-in-law, and nephew are now moving to Montclair. 
And they're really, you know, giving me the hard sell because they're like, there's so much great in Montclair. And then, of course, I saw that you had some Montclair connection. And I'm like, is the universe speaking to me about Montclair? Well, maybe. I mean, yeah. you know, there, Montclair, I think, is a very nice town. Um, it was a very white bread town when I was there back in the 70s. But I think it's probably, you know, become a little more sophisticated. It, yes. It, from what I understand, it's a little it's, more diverse. And... Yeah, it seems to be a... Um, you know, very upscale, I think, in some parts, probably some more affordable parts of it. But, uh, you know, it seems to be a real suburb of New York City now, as opposed to, right. you know, when I moved there, I sort of felt like I was out in the outer limits. Mm. But that's because right. I was I grew up in New York City. Yes. Where, you know, that famous Steinberg New Yorker cover which was, you know, Manhattan and then the rest of the world. It was right. like, you know, our, we were very city centric when I was a kid growing up. I mean, that's just I think it's kind of a New York state of mind as. As the poet said, as the poet Billy Joel once said, uh, so. right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you spent a spell out in Santa Monica, right? Did you live out in Santa Monica? When well, you we lived to... there for, yeah, most, I mean, all of my kids grew, you know, they were born in Santa Monica. Uh, two of them were born. I have two daughters. Uh, uh, Molly and Ella are now like 33 and 32. And, um, and then uh, Ben was born actually down in Australia. Uh, oh five years after Ella, uh, cause I was doing a flipper TV show down there. Yep. That's right. Which was, you know, just a total blast. You can imagine what a location. I mean, it was a goofy, goofy show, you know? Yeah. But if you're going to film, I recommend watching, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you were the, you were, you were the sheriff. Oh, yeah. I was, uh, you know, Tom Hampton, I was the uh, search and rescue sheriff and the dad so i had those two roles going you know so i mean it was you know tons of fun for an immature grown-up and <laughs> oh, it, was, yeah. it was lots of fun for my kids who were five and seven at the time and it was fun for my wife too who had uh left a really intense job at paramount studios and prior to that uh at saturday night live mm. Um, and when she, you know, when I came to her with this possibility, I said, how would you like to move to Australia for a little while? She said, yes, because right at that time she was working at Paramount. She had done, uh, you know, Lorne Michaels movies there. Um, I don't know if you've done any research on her, but uh, her name is Dinah Minot. And, yeah. um, she, uh, you know, produced all of the the Wayne's World movies and then the Tommy Boy movie and Black Sheep and a couple of other interesting things like Lassie and Stuart Saves His Family and stuff like that. But then, um, uh, you know, she, uh, well, Paramount was going through sort of a restructuring and all of a sudden she had this guy looking over her shoulder when she was writing memos and just used to calling her own shots and she was ready to get out of there. And um, and when this uh, flipper job came up, it was really exciting for both of us to just kind of shake it up. Although it was, you know, I mean, it was kind of low rent, I suppose. Um, you know, you're doing an off. It was it was a syndicated job offshore. Um, at that time, it was dis distributed by um, Tribune which made it kind of mainstream. But then yeah. when I went back for the last two uh, two seasons, it was taken over by something called the PaxNet. Do you remember them? Mm. No. Oh, Pax. Yeah, Pax TV or whatever. PAX. Yeah, Pax yep. TV. Kind of uh, pretty fringe, you know? Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little bit of a, a Christian twist to it, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Kind of yeah. slipped in there under the radar, you know. The next yeah. thing I knew, I was saying grace at dinner with the kids. Oh no! You know, I mean, that's all right. You know, I mean, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah, it's good for some people. <laughs> yeah. It ran for uh, almost four seasons, didn't it? Didn't it? Uh, well, I did three, and it did. There was a fellow, I can't remember his name, but he had played the part before me. Um. 
he was on China Beach. Do you remember? Oh yeah, of? yeah. Um, I'm blanking on his name oh. right now, but yeah, China Beach. Yeah, that's. It. I am really bad at uh, showbiz trivia, to tell you the truth. It's okay. Um, I mean, we watch a bunch of TV now because we're old, and you know. Is it Brian Wimmer? Been... Brian Wimmer. Brian Wimmer. Exactly. Yeah. Good for you. Thanks. And um, <laughs> so he had done the job before me. And I don't know what happened with that. Maybe he didn't want to go back or something like that. And then I think they kind of like cheesed it up. I think it had been um, shot in Florida uh, the first season. And it was a little bit more um, mainstream kind of thing. But then when uh, Village Roadshow took it over and um, a guy named Jeff Hayes was our producer. And he had this whole little world down in Australia. He was like, a, I don't know, there was something that reminded, did you ever read any of the Joseph Conrad books? Like Victory or mm. Jim, these okay. kind of like expatriate guys, like back in the you know 19th century, I think is when these were set. But it was always some guy, oh, um, like uh, Heart of Darkness was Joseph Conrad. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a guy that goes into some, you know, alien world and creates an empire for himself. And that's the way I looked at Jeff Hayes, who kind of had, you know, the corner on things, you know, and he got the good exchange on the currency and all of that. And so that's nice. why it ended up down in Australia shooting for Florida, the Keys, you yep. know. And it was beautiful, and it was really one of the greatest times of our, uh, you know, I mean, everybody looks back at that period as just being one of the most fun things we did. Well, it's like vacation. It's one of the things that I loved about doing that job was yeah. you got to go live in a different place. I mean, very often I was off on my own, you know, yeah. but in this case, I was able to take the kids and my wife and, you know, it was it was a lot of fun. Really was. That's so, great. so did you did you put the kids in school there? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, they were at a school in uh the Palisades called the Village School. Oh, and yeah, cool. uh, I almost little... worked at that school. What's that? I almost worked at that school. I was a kindergarten teacher for many years. So Oh, good for you. Wow, that's Back nice. In and you're not doing that now? No, I when my son was born, I I quote unquote retired from teaching to focus on being a full time dad. So uh, that's my greatest job you. now. Yeah. And is the full time mom around too? She is. She is. Not, uh, not to know, get too personal. No, no, no. It's all good. She she flipped. We we flipped the script on the uh, the stereotypical, uh, you know, hunter gatherer yeah. or whatever. And uh, sure. I'm the one who makes the meals at night and makes sure everything is locked Excellent. up in that sense. So good for you. But yeah, the ship running. I, could, I mean, it's very dual. Like we have very, it's a very balanced relationship to get personal. <laughs> it's a very bad. Yeah, no, she's that, like, that, give me a beer. You know, yeah. why isn't my dinner ready? Yeah. And then she slaps yeah. him around for a little Turn bit. My plate's on. not hot. <laughs> <laughs> right. Why isn't the plate warm? Right. Yes. I'm, I'm curious if uh, you ever want to take Flipper in a darker direction and be like, uh, there's a f funny com uh, comedian named Brian Regan who did a whole bit on Flipper. If Flipper had an evil brother named Zipper with a big right. scar down the face, you know, was, so you could channel your chief Brody from Jaws. And uh... <laughs> that would be great. Um, you know, I mean, there's, there's, I think Flipper has enough of a dark side as it is. <laughs> you really, um, really. Yeah. But there were four dolphins, and I remember, you know, you had to pick one according to its mood of the day, you know. Dustin, what's your deal? Are you uh, in this business too, in uh, as an actor? Or yeah, yeah, I'm. I'm primarily I'm a full time voice actor at this point, but I I produced TV for years and years and years, primarily non scripted doc stuff, and. Yep. Um, yeah, and just kind of had enough of that. Dustin, so, right. were you at MTV when Dead at 21 was on? Um, what year was Dead at 21? That was 90... Mid-90s. Mid-90s? Yeah, I think it was their first 
uh, series. It, it was, was a guy named Rod Taylor who produced it. Did you know him? Rod Taylor, like the actor? Yeah, but, you know, like the actor. But Different Rod. Rod. Yeah. Different Rod. I did not know Rod. He was a character, you know, and I think he had conceived of that uh, idea, which was cool, but I guess it didn't fly really for some reason. I mean, it certainly was fun to do. I love the concept. It was great. Yeah. And I remember the kid who was the star of it, Jack Noseworthy. I remember him at the rap party, you know, got really drunk and came up and put his arm around me and said, we're, we're taking off, man. <laughs> this is it. Yeah. We're taking yeah. off, Wim. Yeah, this is it, man. This Our lives it. are going to change now. And I was, you know, a little oh. bit more seasoned. And I said, well, yeah. you never know, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Keep drinking, enjoy your night. But uh, that's right. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, what you're both is so you're both doing voice acting. Yeah. D Dustin's my mentor. Um, I, we were introduced through a mutual friend, yeah. former parent that, uh, of a child that I taught who's a senior now, which is crazy because uh, she was five at the time. And five at the time. You oh. know, I, I'm very much a believer in everything happening for a reason. Uh, yeah. Meeting, making connections and meeting people. It all matters. And if you don't look at the signs, then, you know, you you miss yeah. out on a great opportunity. And Dustin and I met uh, through voice because of voice acting and then became fast friends and started doing the show together. It was a mutual love of very obscure eighties, everything like Ruskies, right. which, you know, is interesting to, I get it, you know? And so I don't know why, I mean, first of all, I barely ever look at Instagram or whatever it was. Facebook, yeah. Yeah. Instagram. Messenger. Yeah. And I think you might've communicated with me way before I responded. Yeah. Like but, a year or so ago. Yeah, I know. And it's oh. only because I just never, cause I don't have it as an alert. Right. And, no, same. You know, every now and then I stumble across something and then I see something that somebody wrote that was, you know, like, you know, like deserved a response, you know. Well, and thanks for deserving feel, my response. Well, no, I mean, it's great, you know, and then and then also, you know, with this whole new Maverick thing coming out, I was kind of caught up in some of it, you know, like the local. Do we have a show called 207 on the NBC affiliate here? and um. This guy named Rob came into my house with his cameraman and, you know, shot me with this like fluorescent light you know, in yeah. my living room. My wife was so pissed at me. I mean, you're <laughs> down in my basement here. So, um, but, uh, he, you know, he, he pronounced my name uh, Hubbly the entire hey, interview. Hey, no, really? Come on, man. Yeah, I know. And he felt so bad about it afterwards. He really apologized. I think. His connection at the station was my neighbor and she might've gotten my name wrong. And I think there was a good explanation for it, but it is journalism 101, I suppose. It is. It is. And, you know, yeah. not to, not to like toot our own horn for a moment, but we are Uber fanboys of, of people's work. So when we have you on the show, it's, it's to, to us, it's like, yeah, Top Gun, Hollywood. That's yeah. great. But there's so much more to your career or so much more to who you are as a person uh, yeah. that we want to dig a little bit deeper in that respect. Well, it's interesting because, you know, with this all of this stuff about the new Maverick and then there was a lot of press about that. And then I get, ended up doing some of these interviews and, um, you know, it's fun to kind of be reminded of it. And, you know, when I heard that they were making a sequel before yeah. the pandemic. I actually, you know, I thought about, maybe what should I like do anything about this or what? And then I thought, yeah, come on. Don't be an idiot. You know, I had a good re relationship with Don Simpson primarily, but he's no longer here. But uh, then Jerry Bruckheimer was uh, very, you know, I was very compatible, friendly with him. And, um, and so I just called him up. I don't, you know, I mean, it's not like, you know, you just uh, every now yeah. and then you're kind of called upon to do something that's like a move to the hoop, you know, and I yeah. and I just I called him up and his assistant answered and then took my number and then he called me right back, you know, and he was just 
we had a really nice conversation. And at that point, I just said, look, Jerry, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you're much more aware of this than I am, uh, especially looking at your bank account. But <laughs> this movie has followed me everywhere for yeah. years, you know, and I keep getting called back to do the 25th anniversary down at Miramar or the 30th anniversary, uh, some press thing in Hollywood. And, you know, it, and it's phenomenal. And it's something that even though when we were all cast in that movie, we knew that we were doing something that was going to be big, but none of us really knew who Tom Cruise was at that point. And it kind of had the feeling that even though, because I remember going in on about five auditions on this movie that were spread, you know, over six months or something like that. Wow. You would just keep putting it on the back burner or forget about it. And then you get called in again. And um, and it, I, as I recall, I could be bullshitting completely, but as I recall... <laughs> Make it, sure it's good. Uh, well, you know, I mean, I I might have made this up because I like the story, but I think it was called Top Guns when it was first written. And it was much more of an ensemble thing about yeah. fighter pilots and their lives on and off the base and mm -hmm. how their work affected their family lives and all of that kind of stuff. And then I just remember getting to that set and uh, throughout the course of the shooting, just seeing how they were treating Tom. Yeah. And I think Risky Business might have been coming out at the same time. I think so. Probably, the year before, yeah. 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 And so all of a sudden, he was just going through the roof. And I think they really saw what they had. And they made it much more his story. Mm. And, uh, but, you know, as like I say, I could be wrong about that. I don't know. I mean, I know that my character, Hollywood, had all sorts of great little you know, it was not exactly my sense of uh, humor or sensibility because it was all about like kind of, you know, kinky sex shit with lots of zippers and twin sisters and stuff like that, <laughs> which, you know, I mean, yeah, there's a place for that. But I just don't. There is about that sort of thing. <laughs> but at least I just kind of played into that. That was why I was called Hollywood, you know. Yeah. And um, that's funny. Yeah, and it was, you know, but then uh, those those scenes that we shot every time I would go back and see Tony Scott in some post-production thing, it was like, oh, sorry, mate. You know, what about that scene of the, oh, oh you didn't hear about that? I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah, so, you know, it came, it, it turned out to be snippets. So just kept whittling you. What's that? They just kept whittling your, your scenes uh, down. Yeah. Yes, as they do. Yes. So, you know, they probably had six hours of film in the first cut and they had to get it down to, you know, because you had to leave a lot of room for that exchange of saliva in silhouette. <laughs> do you remember in that love scene? Sure do. Yeah. Just looks really awkward now. It yeah. really does. It's very oh, dated. It uh, recently, did not age well. Yeah, it doesn't. And none of it ages well. And it's funny because one of my daughters, my daughter, Ella, who I said is 32, she did go to that last thing. It was some, I think, the 30th anniversary. And there was some Hollywood thing that we had to do. And she was out there. So I got her to come along with me. And it was really the first time she had watched the movie. Oh, no. And she sat next to oh. me and watched it. And you could just tell she was cringing. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I wasn't watching uh, Species with her. Oh, boy. That would have been a bummer. I think I watched that with my wife, and that was not a comfortable moment. I can imagine. Um, yeah. I, right, really. Yeah. People but, you know, it doesn't, it just, just didn't age that well, that movie. I mean, I think they did a good job with the second one. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Really up to date, you know. I, I mean, was, that, that, there's a lot of films that, we well, actually that's one of the things we talk about on our show. We try to find the the silver lining in some of these films that haven't aged well, whether it be dialogue. So, right. for example, in 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 the Ruskies, um, you know, the relationship that the boys have is a well, for lack of a better term, it it's it's like kind of 
throwing out certain derogatory terms that are not okay now at each other was a thing in the 80s that was very yeah. common, I think. Oh, my God. I mean, look at all of the Porky's humor and the, you know, um, you know, uh, Animal House and stuff. And in, 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 in a way, I, I'm kind of sad about that some of that's gone because I just feel like we have to be so careful now. We can't, you know, my daughter is a, Ella is a musician and a rock and roller, and, but she's oh, cool. teaching at a very progressive school in Ojai. And oh, she, nice. she's, nice. she's just an amazing kid. And she uh, uh, is she shared this big, long, like, journal entry with us on the family thread last night, which was about, like, this show that she was putting together for, um, you know, some, like, Huna or some sort of, like, Hawaiian tradition. And okay. so the kids had come up with their Hawaiian costumes and one of the mothers pointed out to her that that's appropriation and you can't do that yeah and it just made me sort of sad because i thought well okay so there's a difference between appropriation and appreciation yeah and in a way i mean yes of course a lot of that humor is really hostile and bullshit right about about it but some of the humor um i don't know i just think you know it's 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 the pendulum swinging really far and maybe it's going to keep swinging that way i don't know well I, maybe- I, I think in in the case of ruski's the the i feel like it's pretty darn accurate for the way i saw the kids at that age i was around the same age when that movie came out and right. i was talking to kids like that uh you know we had i had friends that now I would, there's no way in hell now I would have friends where I was arguing constantly or battling each other, or beating each other up. But that was the thing that we, we did not have a, a, a sense of awareness like we have now, a sense right. of education. We, we did not have teachers that would instill these, uh, uh, just a level of kind of experience. And, you know, I, I worked on a Pueblo in Taos, uh, with, with, with the people that live there and brought it back to my school. We're talking 2004, 2005, uh, no, 2007. And there were kids still at that age that were totally unaware of indigenous people still existing in this country. And so that's a level of privilege that I wanted to kind of break down where they're stuck in this bubble, you know? Yeah. And I get that. I get that side of like, you don't want to offend anybody. And I totally respect that. I think there's also a level of like, okay, but how, so how can we incorporate this and still convey this message of gratitude that we have uh, for these different cultures and not yeah. come across as being offensive? I think there's, right. there's a level of discussion there that it, that definitely needs to happen. Yeah. I mean, you know, and then she said that they're going to be having a, a, you know, they do it in a circle and they, yeah. I think they, they went, my kids went to uh, new roads also. Do I almost you know taught there too. Yeah. So did you know, Brian, uh, d- uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 David Brian. Yes. Yep. David Brian was just such an inspiration to my kids. He's you wonderful. Know? Wonderful. And um, they used to go up to Ojai uh, to the foundation up there and do the sweat tent and the circle. Okay. Mm-hmm. So they l- really learn, uh, you know, that form of communication. Yeah, um, you know, I, I really like I'm so excited about my kids, all three of them. I know that sounds a little bit hokey, but no, they, uh, uh, I mean, you're look, yeah. D- Dustin. Dustin will say right now that is not hokey on our show. <laughs> when yeah. I, I no, bring the heck out of my son. And you're talking to a guy. Zach, uh, who every day writes a note for his son for the past, uh, since his son was in preschool, his son is now um, in third grade yep. and right. uh, has written him a note every single day, a very elaborate drawing. Um, n- do you have a note handy right now? I it's, do, actually. It's, yeah, it's like, you know, um, just preaching positivity, but incorporating nostalgic uh elements of current elements there's there there works you know 
it's like these epic yeah if you can see that yeah um, that's great Good so um ted lasso tuesdays so it's all gravy you know it's it's yeah. a beautiful thing new roads is a wonderful school uh, i worked at wildwood for a while and um very right. similar in style sure. based on, you know it, it, there's a there's smash which is a local school here in santa monica exactly and so uh yeah. you know it's 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 an all good thing i i will say we started he and i started watching Rus ruskies together and he loved the opening of it uh, -oh. uh he, had, he had to go to bed so we started watching it and and he, he asked who i was interviewing from the show and i said well dustin and i are interviewing this guy he plays misha yeah. and he's like is he a good guy I go yeah actually he's probably the the goodest guy in yeah. the movie right yeah <laughs> of course compassion is cons Yes, you know, and I said, yes, Bodhi, there was a time, you, you know, you have to, uh, God, that is really funny. That comes back to me. <laughs> did, I, did you, I, yeah, I don't remember that. my kids watching Ruskies. It's oh, you got to show it to them. Yeah. The, I think they've seen it, but I don't remember them watching it. It's very... It's very pure in its like it, it's really no different than like E.T. or, you know, Encino Man or like a lot of those just kind of like fish out of water. Like there's even elements of like Back to the Future. It's like just trying to get home. Right. Um, Misha doesn't know why he's there. You know, he's just following orders. Yeah. And there's so many moments in that movie where I would like I was like I had to stop it because like whatever I would just like pause it to go do something else. But I would always freeze frame on your face somehow in the most joyful freeze frame ever. <laughs> oh, like you just be like okay. like the happiest. I, and I yeah. And just such a pure like, you know, just pure innocence. I mean, that really is that really is what it is. Um, was yeah. that role? Was that audition process? Um like what you were saying, was that a was that a long, arduous process? Well, no, it wasn't really. You know, it was definitely one of those things that came to me as, you know, a total surprise and out of the blue, uh, total, you know, I mean, I, I, I had done Top Gun. So it was like I was kind of on a track of auditions that people like I was getting a couple of offers on doing leads in movies that were, you know, like um, commando films and stuff like that. Um, but and then, you know, I guess because of the, uh, you know, I had a little bit of uh, that, you know, because I had whatever you get from being in a movie like Top Gun that was successful that year. Um, and I think it was like right after that I auditioned for that. I went off and did a North and South down in Natchez, Mississippi yep. that, um, you know, I mean, things were kind of rolling, you know. And so when I went into this audition, I guess I was feeling, you know, pretty confident, except for that. I really I remember going in and trying this Russian accent and feeling like I had just totally botched it, you know. I really didn't know anything about it at all. And, um, and you know, that was the beginning of a long relationship with the director named Rick Rosenthal, who um, had come out of Harvard Film School, believe it or not. But mm -hmm. his, um, and then he went to AFI. And I think after uh, AFI, he did the this, it was like, I think it was one of, the first films that Sean Penn really got some notoriety for. Um, you can tell me better than I. Yeah, know. Bad Boys. But there, well, Bad Boys. But what it went? What was the sequence there? Was it like Fast Times before Bad Boys? Fast Times was before Bad Boys. Yeah. Okay, and then also he did Taps. Yep. Um, but Bad Boys was like his big lead, right? And yeah. uh, you know, and. He, and it got good reviews, I believe. And so Rick was in a, you know, I think he was kind of on the right on that path. And and I think he gave the uh, Ruskies to Sean first and Sean said, uh, well, OK, I might be interested in it if we just totally read uh, right the end. Right. OK. Oh, OK. And 
and maybe he wanted to rewrite more. I don't know. But uh, I think they were kind of deal breakers for Rick. And um, and then he decided to go into the audition process. And, you know, the the thing is, is that I kind of share a lot of the same sensibility with Sean Penn, where I, I definitely, you know, kind of see things the way he does as as an actor. I can't. That's a, probably about as far as I should take the. Uh, you know the comparison uh, because Not i politically you know, right but you know i i just kind of like i always what he does resonates with me and yeah. so uh you know i kind of felt like i took on ruskies with a little bit more of that sensibility too but i certainly didn't have the clout that he had at that time to make the suggestions but what happened was that they set me up with this guy named vladimir skomorovsky who was my dialect coach to begin with and that's all he was supposed to be except for that i just kind of locked in with the guy mm -hmm. and we started hanging out all the time for the whole prep period and uh one of the last things that uh steven deutsch was the producer of that and he asked me what would you do to prepare for it in my last meeting with him and i said well boy i'd love to go to russia and he and they said okay we'll send you and they gave me two tickets to go to Russia. And back at that time, it was right after Chernobyl. So, oh, wow. you know, you could do, a, you were still, it was Gorbachev, it was Glasnost, and you could still do, you had to do a tour. Like you, they were kind of like, you'd come to Moscow and then you'd be taken to Leningrad or, you know. Uh, then Kiev was on the tour, but, you know, since it was glowing, yellow we decided not to go there <laughs> and then odessa was where my character misha was from mm. and i just really liked the idea of being able to go to odessa and walk the streets and find a school that would have been my school and smell the hallways yeah. and just walk i don't have you had the occasion to go back to your old school and see what that feels like i went my father took me back to my old school the first time I introduced my wife to Michigan and we, it was right around the corner. We're driving down the street around the corner and we look where the school should be. And it's completely leveled. All there oh. is is dirt. They had literally oh. just tore it down the week before. And right. my father goes and he gets, he digs in the ground and found a brick from the oh. school that was buried in the ground. Right. And they he sent me that brick. Oh, yeah. Beat me with it. yeah. yeah. It's from the Navy. Uh, he, and he gives me this brick. I still have it to this day. And not to sound hokey or whatever, but I hold that brick and I'm like I'm holding my school, holding my well, childhood there. So okay. 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 Uh, uh, well, I'll get I'll top your hokey because when I went to Russia, what is so by the time I left there, uh left for Russia, Vladimir Volodya was so, you know, like we were so tight that he gave me uh, a list of assignments. First of all, he gave me lists of all these people to look up. But then also when I got to Odessa, which is where his parents were buried, I had to go out and find, or no, maybe that was Moscow. I can't remember. But, he, but he, what he wanted was soil from the Black Sea, just like the brick, right? Yeah. And he and and I brought back this bag of soil for him. And I met him at the hotel room down in Key West when I got back. And he came into my room and he took this bag and he put his nose in it and these tears just. Oh, wow. And, um, you know, and that was the kind of connection I had with the guy. I also uh, located his grave way. Uh, I mean, his parents graves way out in the outskirts of uh, Moscow. He had not seen them uh, uh, since he had left and he really wasn't able to go back because he was in a group of artists that were kind of persona non grata in mm -hmm. terms of being able to come and go, right? Yeah. And uh, his friends were activists and stuff like that. So, I, you know, I went there uh, and, you know, we have pictures of us toast. He wanted me to toast them with a bottle of vodka mm -hmm. and have drink the vodka at their graves. And, wow. and, you know, so that was a like a real connection. And as soon as I got back to uh, Key West, Rick 
got wind of what was going on with me and Volodya. And he said, no, that's a different movie. Yeah, and canned. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. He was supposed to stick around to be my dialect coach. Yeah. Yeah. But he did not want that sensibility. And that oh, was when I recognized for the first time. Now, Rick would probably, if he were here on this interview, he would probably disagree with me. Mm -hmm. But that was my recollection of it was that he and I didn't see eye to eye on the movie we wanted to make in that regard. I really, you know, it was much more of a, um, you know, those montages in Ruski's, the jump cut things. Yeah. Da -da -da, you know, the 1980s thing. Of course. We can have it all. If the we oh, try. My Lord. Yeah. And that was not, you know, I mean, it's never been my kind of movie, I got to say, you know. But it was very popular at that time. I it was know a it kind was. of a template for a lot of kid yeah. movies. Right. And it, and it, and, you know, I get it. But that was the kind of movie he wanted to make. And mm. I'm, I think it's unfortunate because the movie bombed, you know. And yeah. I think it could have done better if we had made a more substantial story, you know. Uh, well, Sheldon, Sheldon Ledich wrote the uh, screenplay, I believe, right? Or it was yeah. his story. He, we had him on the show. Uh, we talked briefly about Ruski's, uh, which he was very proud of and was was disappointed as well in its success yeah. uh, or lack of um and there are moments throughout the movie where you feel like this the tone could have easily shifted yeah yeah Leaf i mean that's substan you know stand by me was something to compare it to i suppose and yeah. that was a movie that really had some substance to it right even though that's carl i mean what's his name reiner rob yeah. reiner right yeah rob reiner yep and you know god it's funny you know i mean these the dynamics you get into, I know that Rick is so resentful of Rob Reiner, you know, and, mm. uh, you know, there, you know, there are certain, there are some people that, you know, he, that I remember him because we, he and I became really good friends. As a matter of fact, I'm his son's godfather. Oh, wow. I mean, we became really good friends and, uh, he helped me so much, you know, uh, he really wanted to help me. Um, I did uh, Life Goes On with him. Do you remember yeah. that? Show? Of course. Uh, a couple of times, I think. He wanted me to be on that show. And I was like, you know, back in those days, we all thought, you know, doing television was not the way to go. We thought you know, we were going to be Sean Penn, right? Yep. And uh, all of my buddies coming out from New York, we all thought, oh, no, we're not going to do yeah. that. You know? And, uh, you know, I remember there was a uh, thing I did called Desperado, which was a TV movie that they made. A, they they were they called it a wheel of TV movies. Do you remember that? Yep. They would have like eight or six or five of these of the same story. So there was this character named Duel McCall that uh, was <laughs> the the hero of Desperado, and I remember going up for that, and my roommate dale midkiff you remember him and oh yeah Elvis, um was up for it also so i lived in this uh apartment out on venice beach right on speedway plate glass window looking at the ocean oh. you know wow and you know but other than that it was like hotel california with the cottage cheese ceilings and uh -huh. the brown rug you know and um and it, and it was kind of a gross apartment, but it was this whole complex that we all lived in. Like a whole bunch of New York guys came That's out. Fun. Fisher Stevens was there, wow. and Willie Garson, and wow, Craig Sheffer, and uh, Sheffer's brother, who he called Chef. I don't remember his first name. Um, my my buddies Topper Lillian and Carol Cartwright, who I don't know if you've ever come across them. They are writers. Mm. Um, but you know, and they're the kind of writers who just write nonstop, but things don't necessarily get produced, but they get paid for what they're doing, you know. And although Carol just had one uh that finally did real uh, came out. Um well, first of all, he did this movie uh called What Maisie Knew, based okay. on a Henry James novel. And uh then uh but he's my you know, Topper and Carol are my oldest buddies from New York city when i was a little kid nice and we still remain close buddies um 
But, you know, so we were all in this apartment together and it was one of those, you know, it had the staircase going down and the little fountain in the middle. And it was like, you know, right down on 17th and Speedway in Venice. That's wild. Was, cool. Right in the middle of it. You yeah. Know? And. Um, uh, but I remember Dale coming back from his last meeting on this Desperado thing. And I came back from mine and we had both been offered screen tests for it. And we had both turned the thing down. <laughs> oh, and you're the lead role. <laughs> the lead role. And the moral of the story is that like four years later, I was playing Alex MacArthur's sidekick. He was the guy who took the job. Yeah, Alex MacArthur. He was in a great movie called Rampage. I believe William Friedkin directed that mm. way back when. Yeah, anyways, I think I remember that. Yeah, like a serial killer or something with right. like a bean. Anyways. Right. Yeah, well, you know, Alex did a good job with it. Yeah. And I played his, you know, kind of this happy-go-lucky sidekick of his. Charlie, you know. Charlie Cates. Charlie yeah, Cates. Charlie Cates. Yeah, there's a God. it's a tremendous cast. William uh, uh, um, Farnsworth. Um, Farnsworth was in it. Uh, and uh, Remor Grimley. Oh, wow. Brad Dourif. Yes, and and uh, James Remar. And James Remar, of course. Yep. And Deborah Foyer. Yes. Who had you know was Mickey. Rourke's wife or something like that. Mm. Oh Way back when. Yeah, I thought you, I thought you were going month. to talk about Nasty Boys, <clears throat> the TV show, uh, the pilot you did for that. Um. Well, yeah, that was fun. That was Rick Rosenthal too. I love that show. I, it, it didn't last very long, but I remember that obviously the theme yeah. song was a rip off of uh, Janet Jackson or an homage. I guess they couldn't do it. It was like a cover basically. Really? Yeah. Did, Dick Wolf, yeah. did Dick Wolf produce that? I think he did. Yeah, he did. Wow. It's, it's a fun t television. It came out in the early nineties. It might've been 90 or 91 when it came out. Right. Uh, it came out at the, at the height of like, Miami Vice inspired type shows. Yeah. And nasty boys right. were, you know, these good looking dudes who would go undercover to, you know, bust people and anyways. right. Bust them. Bust you. Benjamin Bratt. Benjamin Bratt. Okay. Dude. Yeah. One of his first. He's anyways. done well, I guess, Benjamin, hasn't he? Yeah. He's poker face now. And oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Seen a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. But you're here with us. And uh, and 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 we get we get to talk to you by your career, and but it's been a pleasure to have you on our show. Sure. Thank you. I yeah, I appreciate it. A lot of <laughs> you see, you're you know I'm so glad you're good guys. Well, we have our moments, so we are yeah. glad too. Thank you very much. A, this has been a lot of fun. This Thanks, has been, it's been a fantastic. Awesome. Have Take a care. glorious day. I will.